Hey guys, it's Glenn from glenscarcollection.com and we're going to do a video series over the next couple weeks, couple months about how to buy a car. Very common, I get these emails all the time, almost daily, with uh, how to buy a new car, how to buy a used car question, so I figured maybe I'd do a video series and this way you can refer to it if you have any questions. Now, one of the most, uh, and if you like these kind of videos, obviously hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Uh, while we're all stuck home, I've been posting five videos a week instead of three. Figure you have guys have more free time to watch videos, so make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of those extra videos I post. Like and share this video so our channel can grow, and as always, leave your thoughts in a positive comment below. All right, so one of the most uh, common questions I get, and not necessarily from car people, but just people I know, friends, coworkers, anything, uh, acquaintances, neighbors, people always ask me, like, say they say they want to buy such and such a car. It doesn't matter if it's a Chevy or a BMW. And I say, oh, well, go to this dealer. I know this person. I can get you a good price. Many times they say, I don't want to buy from that dealer because I don't want to have to go all the way there for service. So that's a really big misconception. You don't have to buy the car from who you're is going to service it. So if you look at my collection of cars, I live in New Jersey. Uh, let's see how many cars that I actually bought in New Jersey. I think you go to wherever the best price is, whether that's new or used, and obviously you get a service at your local dealer, or you know you might have a good independent. We'll get into all that as well. But let's just look at the cars I have right now. Uh, my daily driver, the Audi S8. I bought that in Florida. Yes, in Florida. Now. The S8 is a pretty rare car. They only make maybe a couple hundred of them a year. Uh, you're probably only going to find a handful for sale. Most dealers do not have an S8 in stock. And, uh, you know, I wanted the uh, the Bang & Olufsen 1500 watt stereo, whatever it is. Once you hear it, you can't unhear it. So the closest to my house that had that was actually Miami. So a thousand miles away from where I live in New Jersey. So I didn't buy, you know, there's an Audi dealer five minutes from my house. But I bought that car in Florida. Let's see, what else do we have here? The BMW 1M. I bought that car in New York. Been great to buy it in Jersey, but not too far. About an hour away, maybe two hours away with traffic. My Acura NSX. I actually found that car in Southern California. Now, I also had an NSX before this car. Uh, this is a 2005. I had a 95 uh, black and tan NSX. That car I actually found in Massachusetts, about four hours north of me. My Porsche 993 Turbo, I actually found that car in Pennsylvania, about three hours from my house. My McLaren 570S, same thing. I found that in Pennsylvania. My Z3M Coupe, I actually bought in Connecticut, about two hours north of my house. So it just shows you of all the cars I mentioned, oh, my E46 M3, <laughs> that car I actually bought in New Jersey. I found that down in Princeton. So the cars I mentioned, only one of those cars I actually found in New Jersey. Now, we live in a populated area. Uh, I remember reading a statistic like 80% of the United States population, it might be different now because more people are moving out west, uh, lived between Boston in Washington, D.C., and Philadelphia, kind of that triangle there. And that's why Atlantic City was where it was, because that's it was driving distance for 80% of the United States. Uh, so it just shows you, you don't have to buy from the dealer closest to you. Now, I would certainly give the dealer closest to me first shot. Sometimes you might have to get an out-of-state price, and you remember, you have to have apples to apples. So if the uh, sales tax is different, you know, make sure they know if you're buying out-of-state that you're going to be registering this car in New Jersey. So you pay New Jersey sales tax. So how that works is, you know, when I bought the Audi, the NSX, they'll give you all the paperwork and obviously you can get the car delivered to your house. Then you go to Motor Vehicles and then you register it and pay the sales tax to New Jersey when you register it. So that's where you live. That's where you're using the car. That's where the sales taxes do. So another thing I hear from people is, I'm going to buy the car out of state so I don't have to deal with the sales tax. That's not true. <laughs> you're going to pay the sales tax and but when you come home to New Jersey to register it. So they'll give you probably a temporary plate uh, to move the car, to transport the car to your house. 
Uh, you should be usually that has 30 day expiration. Check your state and local laws for this. Usually be able to drive that car. Uh, I think by law you might have to go to DMV within 15 days and every state is different. And then uh, then you take it to inspection after that. And even if it's a brand new car, you have to take it for inspection. So I bought a couple cars brand new out of state. And uh, even though they're not due for inspection here in New Jersey for five years because you bought it out of state, you got to go to uh, to DMV and get a sticker for it. So a lot of times salespeople will use this tactic against you. If you're like I'm in New Jersey, if I went to across the border to New York State or across the river to New York City or to Pennsylvania and wanted to buy a car, the salesman could actually use that against you. So you go to your local dealer, for example, that's five minutes from your house and you say, oh, well, the Audi dealer in Pennsylvania or New York is giving me a better deal. The salesman was going to say, oh, well, then you have to go there for service. What's going to happen when you get a flat tire or a bent wheel from a pothole? You're going to go all the way to Pennsylvania to get a fix. You're going to go all the way to New York. And that's just not true. So that's a salesman tactic uh, where you can get that car fixed anywhere. So you buy your your new Chevy or Ford at uh, in Pennsylvania or in New York City. You bring it home to Jersey. You get a flat tire. You need service. You can go to the dealer that's five minutes from your house. Any dealer makes most of his money from service, not actually buying and selling cars. So believe me, they don't care where you bought it from. They're going to want to service that car because they're going to get make money off it. And it's convenient for you because you're there, especially if it's something like a bigger service where they're going to give you a loaner car. Uh, typically with loaner cars, they don't want you to cross state lines and stuff like that. Read your loaner car agreement. So the biggest thing I can teach you in this video is you can buy your newer used car from anywhere. You don't have to buy it from your local dealer. It'd be great, certainly more convenient, but I can tell you, like if I drive three hours to Pennsylvania or two hours to Connecticut, you know what? I may be saving $1,000, $5,000. Even if I'm saving $1,000, you want to drive three hours to save $1,000? Basically, you're getting paid $300 an hour to make that drive. I would I do that all day long. You can hire me and pay me $300 an hour. I'll drive wherever you want. I'll drive to California if you want. So that's a big misconception that I think before we get into buying and selling and how to get a good deal and everything like that, need to know that you can buy anywhere. So now whether you want a Honda, a Mercedes, uh, a McLaren, you have so many dealers that can compete to your business. And obviously, more competition is going to give you better results. All right, guys, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, leave your comments below what you'd like to see in the car, car buying process, and I'll do it in a future video. Uh, I guess we'll label this part one, and then we'll have part two, part three, and we'll keep going uh, to answer the most common questions. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.